Today's video was selected for you by my gorgeous patrons, so thank you very much to them for making this selection. And if you would like to be involved in future video polls and also have access to the Discord, the one card riff video every month and other privileges as well, check out the tiers. I will leave all the information down below. Hello Treacle Tarts, welcome back to another episode of Art Witch. Thank you so much for joining me while I make some visual magic happen. I'm very excited to be doing this again. I think it's always really exciting to let other people into a bit of my artistic process. And I have some very clear goals today, some things that I know I definitely want to be doing. So it will be really cool to take you with me. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about what I'm doing and what I'm using and stuff. First of all, you can use the timestamps if you just want to skip ahead to getting started with me and me actually sort of like going into the work but I'll talk you through a little bit first of all um you know what is going on and what I'll be making and how I work if you want to know that so for those of you who don't know um I am a collage artist and I suppose more accurately you could call me collage and mixed media um I use a lot of paper I use a lot of things from magazines and stuff like that and I combine that together with acrylic paint watercolor paint pens um and stuff of that nature so there is kind of like line work in a lot of the collages not in all of them but in most of them I have done an art book tour before like a sketchbook tour so I'll leave that down below if you're interested in having a little nosy into one of my sketchbooks. I would say it was one of my favourite sketchbooks that I was using so that you can get a sense of what I do. It is a very specific flavour. Um, so uh, here's an example, actually. This is the most recent collage that I started. Obviously, it's not finished yet. I don't know if the light's playing. There we go. So you can see there that there is line work, there is a face, um, there's a leaf work behind there. It's not finished at all. It, it needs to have more cuts in it and more lines and this and that before I feel like it's completed. But essentially that's the kind of style that I do. Um, so I'm gonna be working today on some printables for my patrons. Um, uh, over on Patreon we have a thing called Ray of Paper Sun and it's basically where I deliver to my patrons some printable things that they can fill out or work with, um, they can use them as journal prompts, there are sometimes like really cool things to cut out, um, there are list things, so, so sometimes I just give uh, my patrons a list of 20 things that they can tick off as they go through them. I do all kinds of different things really. Um, I haven't even begun with some of the things that I want to do for Patreon. I would really like to do, for example, um, some recipes and do some collage art for those recipes. There's just loads of different things really that I haven't even done yet, so I've definitely got a lot of ideas in me, a lot of different things I'd like to do. Um, this month I've decided that I'm definitely going to make a cutout sticker page, so um, with a lot of, uh, of uh, sort of projects with Ray of Paper Sun, I do like to just make really beautiful visual things with really beautiful wording that's inspiring or motivating, and then my patrons can kind of like print out and cut out and just stick those things wherever they like. So I'm definitely going to do a sticker page today. And I'm definitely also going to do um, a sort of tarot exercise thing that will have my original collage work as well on it. Um, and the tarot exercise that I'm going to do is called Witch Card Wood. And I will explain that to you a little bit more as we get into it. So I want to explain to you what you are looking at here, my loves. OK, so obviously over there, there is an incense burner. I am going to be burning some incense, probably some nag because I'm in the mood for some nag. Um, I've got a few crystals on the go. I've got this amazing Labradorite. Look at it. Just, would you just look at it? Look. Oh my days. It's beautiful. Oh, this was given to me by two utterly beautiful friends. And I love it so much. Um, I know Labradorite is thought of a lot as a protection stone. And I definitely think that's fair. Um, and I think it also helps you link into your deep wisdom. But I also just find it incredibly witchy. I find it inspiring. When I look at it, I just almost immediately start scrying, you know. So for me, it does give me that feeling of the potential for artistic creation to flow. I have got some amethyst up here for opening up to what spirit wants from me. I know that looks like dust, but it's just a little bit where it's kind of cracked off over time. I've had this for a long time, um, this particular piece. 
So I've got some amethyst there. I want to really welcome in any sort of suggestions uh, from beyond my cognition about what might need to happen or what would look good. Um, I've also got here my brother's prayer beads that he bought back from India. So I really wanted to feel like Nick is with me today through this process because I have found artistic creation quite difficult since I lost him in March. Um, and I really have felt like I have been on the back foot and I've kind of started things and then not completed them. And, um, you know, it's tough. I've had some some sort of bouts with my poetry and stuff like that that have been amazing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, sometimes I just don't feel capable or in readiness. And since I do feel that way today, I can definitely sort of feel his energy strongly today. So I wanted something there that represents him. And I've got a couple of candles up there at the back, not because I need them for seeing things, but because I'm a witch and we need candles. Okay, so I work with a few different things when I'm doing collages and you will see all of this come into action. Um, obviously the plain paper for the collage to go on, the glue, I use spray glue and I also use like prick sticks and other things of that nature. Um, I've got my craft knife. I use this to cut out things from magazines and I also use a bog standard pair of scissors. It really depends what I'm cutting out, so it depends what's needed. Um, I do work with paint brushes if I choose to incorporate paint into any of the imagery. I like to work with Tipex and other makes that are like Tipex because um, it really allows me to give a lot more um, emphasis to the parts of the collage that I want to have stand out, you know. So I might sort of um, go round in white to demonstrate like that something's coming into the foreground. Um, and I also really like the Tipex strip pens and stuff like that because they also can create sort of a scrapbook style ransom note vibe, which I really like. Um, I do work with fine line pens. So this isn't the fine line pen I wanted actually, but I've gotten it out. So for the purposes of demonstration and also the black Sharpie, I mean, you know, of course, I've got a pencil and an eraser because um, a lot of the line work that I do, like the stuff I just showed you, is penciled in first and I decide what I want it to look like and stuff like that um, before going in with pen. I've got a biro there as well just in case and blades for the craft knife because you never know when that sucker is going to get a little bit blunt and it's going to need a bit of a do-over. So there's all of those things. Um, I've also got some pens here. I do like to colour in the line work with pen. This is a brush pen set that I inherited from my brother. And I also have some acrylics and watercolors from him that I might use later. Um, using his art materials has been something really healing for me. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't do yet and there's a lot of things that I can't face yet, but using his art materials feels positive to me and it's something that I can manage to do, um, you know, without becoming outrageously emotionally overwrought to the point where I need to stop you know so I I do like incorporating his his pieces and I, I know he would love that his art materials were being used by me um, this is a cutting board I have a few of them around it's just really hard cardboard um, and I just use that until it's done to death so you can see this one's taken a little bit of an abuse but not too much so far and I just rest that uh, the magazine page on that and then cut around basically um, I work with lots of different magazines, so but, but I do like fashion imagery. So there is often fashion imagery and I also use imagery from like wellness magazines, even a little bit of home interior there. Um, but I really love the big chunky magazines like ID, Love Magazine. And as a long-term collage artist, I've been collecting my magazine uh, stack for a while. So I'm very conscious about what I buy. I don't overbuy magazines. Um, I like to take a magazine apart until I've done it to death and then finally it will get binned at some point you know um, so I've got a selection that I think I want to go through to find imagery I also wanted to mention and this will probably be useful for anyone who would like to be a collage artist or who does like collage but often finds that they don't know where to start they feel like they don't know where to begin I have a tendency to have reference folders and I think I showed this in the previous Art Witch video so for those for whom I'm repeating myself I'm really sorry but I just thought I would let you know this because I think it's um, it's been a bit of a brainwave and a breakthrough for people that have done sacred art journaling with me which you can purchase in my online store by the way if you would like to do some art journaling with me. Um, it's been a breakthrough for people to know that I don't start every collage from scratch with no idea what the imagery is going to be. I 
actually like to go bounty hunting quite a bit so I like to you know um, just sometimes spend time taking things out of magazines that would be useful for a future project uh, sometimes when I'm making a collage piece and I'm looking for something I might come across something else that I can't use for the current project but I see that I will use it for something in the future so um, I do use reference folders so I'll show you a few of mine so this one says faces on it I collage a lot with faces I don't think I'm going to do that too much today because today is more about creating art for my printables and my printables are about tarot and they are about they're going to be about like strength and boundary setting and saying no as well for the sticker page that I'm doing so I don't know how much I'm going to need the faces but essentially it's just exactly what it says on the tin it is a it's a fold full of faces because I very often like to work with the human face so it makes sense that I should have like a ready-made folder of faces that I've pre-selected that I like the look of. I've also got backgrounds that basically is what it says on the tin every time I see something that I think would be a cool background um, I put it in here so for example this I obviously saw this and thought oh that would make a great background colour um, or I can see a grey one there yeah this one great background you know I can really see myself doing a collage on that so I do pull backgrounds out just things that are quite a lot of the same colour or splashes of different colour and I, I pull them out for later use. This is a background that I painted myself a few months ago. I don't know what I want to use it for yet, but I just felt inspired to paint a background myself. Uh, this one, it's exactly what it says on the tin, really. It's um, random crap. So, you know, things that don't necessarily get filed elsewhere. Hang on, it's got to put the charger in. Oh, there we go. Yeah, things that don't necessarily get filed elsewhere, um, but they look cool or interesting and I don't have an idea for them in that moment, but I suspect that I will do. So they go into the random crap folder. And I also have a folder for flora, trees and gardens. So I work a lot with flowers. A lot of my collage imagery contains flowers and to that end, like tree branches, leaves, that kind of thing, garden imagery. So I do have a folder where I can have ready access to things that I've already cut out like this and this for example you know they're already cut out they're already ready for me to put into something and a couple of kind of like flower show floral magazines as well because that's where I get my material from so yeah you can I can sort of decide beforehand I'm like okay I want a lot of flowers in this one and then I go and like grab the flowers you know I also do like to use things like this you know those background um sort of uh, decorative papers that you get in craft stores I don't use these loads but people do buy them for me um I've noticed quite a lot that people do give them to me as presents and uh they they uh, always can be useful so I do use them as well and I don't know why, but I forgot to mention, I always have some sellotape as a collage artist because sometimes when you put different bits of paper together from different magazines and you formulate what you want it to look like, best thing to do is flip it all over and sellotape it at the back so that you have one piece and you then can position that piece on the paper. So that's basically the stuff that I tend to use and I tend to have on me in, in a wheelie box so that whenever I want to do collage, this stuff comes out. Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing today. So um, I'm going to be doing, as I said, the sticker page. Um, I'll probably start with that. And then I'm going to do uh, a thing for my patrons called Which Card Would. So this is a game that I sometimes play with my clients. And it's basically where I give them a list of different scenarios or actions or whatever. And I ask them which card would you know so um some examples from an amazing client of mine that we did recently uh we did which card would sulk until they got their way uh which card would hate going home for thanksgiving you know that kind of thing so i just present the scenario the behavior the feeling and we go into which card would be like that which card would do that and why i really want to gift something like that to my patrons i want them to have the opportunity to explore tarot in that really creative way so i'm going to start brainstorming that as well and put that together and so that's what i'm going to be doing so yeah if you want to collage along with me or scrapbook or paint or just 
you know, uh, have a bit of an organise of your art stuff, you're fully welcome to do so. And similarly, if you just want to chill and watch me, you can do that. So that is what is happening today on Art Witch. Okay, my loves, I bought in my little um, table from the front room that I sometimes use to do art on um, because I don't want to bend too far over today. My back is not the best. So now I'm going to start doing a little bit of hunting for imagery. Um, I think I will begin by... Hmm... This is the kind of decision I usually make on my own in, in silence, whereas uh, I have to let you into my process. I have to explain to you what I'm doing. Um, I think I'm gonna look through the random crap for a bit, see if there's anything in there that I want for this project, um, for maybe uh, the uh, Witch Cardwood game. So let me just see what random crap I've got in here. Be an interesting thing well that is a face so this is this is something that happens with collage artists as well if you do start to use like you know various different imagery and stuff you will not file it properly and you'll have to go back later and file it i like them they're very cute maybe that could be part of something i'll take that to one side oh jellyfish vibes that's really beautiful too that's probably for one of my art pieces more than anything I like this. This is uh, <laughs> very awesome. Maybe I will. Maybe I will um, do the witch card wood in a way where you get different themes. So like fun times, shadow stuff. Um, hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Let me let me take that. I might use that. You never do know. Yeah, these are beautiful. I can definitely see myself cutting the segments out of them and making them all psychedelic so that's a good one um it's always great to go through and see what treasure you've accrued over time um these were gifted to me by a wonderful subscriber who wanted to send me things to play with so i will save them for another time i like it when you don't really know what is going to be in a project until it starts to come together you know that's the best thing. Okay. Yeah, some of them are just little scraps, dramatic looking scraps of um, colour. Ah, that can go into my flowers um, and trees folder. So let me get the face. So while I'm going through these darlings, oh, this is all flowers and trees as well. While I'm going through these bits and pieces and kind of just looking for imagery, I was thinking of talking about um, expectations that we place onto ourselves when we're working on something like this or we want to work on something like this and we kind of feel like we're not um, we're not inspired or we are but we kind of feel insecure about starting or whatever and there's so many times in a person's life where they wish they'd spent some of their free time doing art and then it didn't come together now obviously with the patreon principles i am motivated to do that because it's part of what i offer on patreon um so there is kind of an impetus and i think sometimes if you need an impetus for creating art there is nothing wrong with recognizing exactly that you know um sort of oh i like that parrot because that could be about mimicking or something yes um yeah so uh I think there's nothing wrong with recognising that you could do with an impetus, whether that's external accountability for the art that you're making, whether it's collaborating with somebody else because you know that the collaboration is going to keep you on course and you're actually going to do what you say you're going to do. Um, I think there can be a number of different ways for you to get the drive that you need to do collage work or to, you know, sorry, to do whatever you want to do, whatever creative thing is tickling your fancy. Um, I do find that it does help to have impetus in some way that involves external accountability and also knowing that somebody is waiting for something that I'm creating. Like I genuinely myself do not know if I would write books if there weren't deadlines and you know if I hadn't made that decision and I have definitely given myself deadlines in the past for stuff there's no question definitely have done that. 
um but i think also anything where you can tell people what you're doing get other people involved in what you're doing um that can be definitely an impetus for sure and i think the other reason that people struggle with drive is just because they tell themselves that they're going to have to have a finished piece of work by the end of the process and that is why i would always recommend that people give themselves an opportunity to just play just play you know don't give yourself a mission such as oh i've got the day off so by the end of the day i need to have made something really impressive you know don't give yourself that pressure and then end up feeling intimidated by your own goal instead you could just say i'm going to give myself a few hours today to simply play i'm just going to have a look at what's there and just get experimental you know i was just talking to a client the other day about just getting your sketchbook out and um simply just like you know doing little paint swatches doing paint mixing and see how it looks doing little doodles you know like deliberately giving yourself the opportunity to just um, be around your art materials and think about what's possible but not feel the need to make something that is complete um, I think there's way too much pressure on ourselves to do that and not enough time is spent recognizing how beautiful and how spiritual the simple act of play can be with artistic creation um, so yeah I wanted to mention that too like if you just want to get a sketchbook and just paint random stuff in it and that's what you feel like doing it's a really beautiful picture that's what you feel like doing just do it honestly quite honestly you haven't wasted your time if you decided that was how you were going to spend your time you know so i would definitely say do that and that's how i end up with a lot of the bounty hunted things that go into my random crap folder or my other folders that i might need later you know that's kind of how it ends up happening is i'm just playing i'm just going through magazines playing enjoying imagery sometimes cutting out imagery sometimes not and just letting that be something that if it comes to the end and i haven't completed an image it doesn't matter i've got myself a lot more stuff that i can work with you know so i wanted to mention if that's holding you back the pressure of creating something just say to yourself i'm having a play day that's what i'm doing nothing more nothing less Ooh, i like that little face looks like you said something wrong <laughs> i definitely need to grab that little guy okay i'm gonna use this guy for my which card would exercise like which card would definitely say the wrong thing at the wrong time <laughs> that would be a really good one to do oh i'm definitely gonna use this page collage trick always check what's on the page over leaf in case you actually prefer what's on that page um okay so i'm gonna use this for which card would blab your secrets and which card would keep your secrets i really want to know what people have to say to that one um that would be really interesting see as i go through i kind of like get the ideas as i go hmm love doing this it's one of the most interesting soothing cool things you can do with old magazines see i really like the idea of a question relating to parenthood but but maybe i would use i think there's a lot of kids in here this is more of a like parenting magazine that i've been using i got it when i was over in amsterdam i wonder if i can find the perfect image because I kind of want to ask a question like, oh, here we go. This is a good image of parenthood. I don't want all of the images to be, to visibly look like women though. So I need to think about that as well, because I don't want to put into people's heads that all of the cards they choose have got to, you know, have women in them necessarily. Well, let me cut that out anyway, and I'll figure out if I want to use it for something a bit later. Oh no, that's the one I want. Yeah, I want a baby yes i want a baby i'm gonna ask a question about parenting style i think i want to know what my patrons think of that and what their answers would be this is coming together quite well my loves okay what else hmm It's great because I scan the images and that means that I can reduce the size of them. So they'll all end up looking quite little and I will take you on an exploration of that at the end. 
I'll show you like how I actually scan the images and then size them down. Well, I might not show you how I scan them because that's just boring, but I want to show you how I size them down on Word because um, that can be really useful to do. I like all this food. That's like petal jelly, which is really beautiful. Maybe I will ask a question about food. Like which card would, I don't know, invent their own recipes? Is that too obvious that it would be Queen of Pentacles though? I don't know. I'm just gonna keep searching, see what I find. <laughs> set up now my loves I have to see a couple of clients so I came back and I got my one of my favorite work tables out because the other one was just not really working for me that much I wanted to switch to this one I love this one if anyone's wondering what this is it's actually like a full-on bed desk so this part actually lifts up and you can put your laptop on there and it's got like these convenient holes in it so you can dump your laptop heat um, but I do also like to use it for art uh, quite a bit um, I've got loads of these little bed desks and things because of my back injury it's not very good for me to sit at a desk so I've just always got loads of these little things knocking around that I can use. Um, okay so I have had a look at some of the things that I cut out for the um, which card would exercise I've got quite a few different things I'm definitely going to use some of these and show you my process for using them uh, but first of all I wanted to show you some visual sort of understanding of the other thing that I'm going to be doing which is working on a kind of sticker set so what I also do for my patrons it looks like this basically this is an example of one that my patrons have already received in a previous um in a previous uh, month so basically what it is it sort of does what it says on the tin I create these really beautiful little sticker affirmation things and I put the little um scissor uh, circle around them and then you can cut them out put them in your journal stick them on the fridge you know d decorate things with them put them into cards and stuff like that and I really enjoy doing them I really love doing them this is another one that I did this is actually the original of another one that I did um, let's have a look for some more so um, another one Oh, here we go. Um, this is an exclusive ray of paper sun. Yeah, this is just two on here, but one of them is very, very big and dramatic. Um, so yeah, I really love to do these kind of affirmation, words of power, visual meditation style gifts for my patrons. So I'm definitely gonna be doing one of them today as well. And I think today I wanna do one that is based all around like boundaries and holding your boundary. Oh, here's another one that I did that I absolutely love. This was all about witchcraft. So my witchcraft is skulls and flowers. Today I'm in my divinity powered by potions. Um, so yeah, I really love doing things like this. And they usually have a bit of a theme to them. So today I wanna do one that's about boundaries and um, just making sure that we are protecting our power, protecting our energy, that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I choose the theme uh, that goes with the particular Sabbath that is upcoming and sometimes the theme is just to do with what I feel like I'm most wanting to explore so yeah it really depends it can differ but um, I'm gonna also now have a look at some imagery that I can use to make one of those uh, sheets today as well for my patrons. Okay, I've got quite a nice collection of images together that reminded me of boundaries. And um, I actually think what came up more, to be honest, was identity while I was going through the imagery that I decided upon. I felt like it was more to do with going your own way, doing things your own way, not succumbing to peer pressure, living life the way you see fit. 
So it's quite interesting because sometimes when you're planning a project, things can change as you actually go through and get your subject matter together and think about what fits. You end up realising that you want to say something perhaps a little bit different than what you thought. So I do find that interesting. Um, there is a, really something very spiritual about making art that is intended to inspire other people um, and to sort of take them somewhere in their mind. Um, whenever I'm doing that, like whenever, for example, I'm making something as a gift or I'm doing something for my patrons, like I'm doing now, I always try to make sure that I'm also thinking about what I'm interested in at that moment and what would be inspiring for me. So I never want to just think about the other person and consider them. I always try and make sure that it's speaking to my heart, you know, um, and it's something that I've been thinking about lately or that I think is really worth considering so it also is a gift for me just to make it I suppose like I'm gifting myself that opportunity to check in as well which is great um yeah so I would recommend as well if you're in a little bit of a rut with creating things that you might want to start by creating something as a gift I know it can be a little bit intimidating um, but choose someone, you know, for whom that level of intimidation is quite low. Someone in your life that you care for, who cares for you, and you know that they will really appreciate the thought and the sentiment and someone that needs it, you know, someone that needs something like that right now in their life as well, um, will kind of get you over any hang-ups that you're feeling about creating art that is going to be seen by somebody that is actually for them. Um yeah I've I've made a few different art projects to try and like comfort friends or help them through a difficult time so I always find that that really is very helpful to them and, and they really appreciate the time and the thought that was put into it so that's definitely something as well that I think I would say is gets you out of your own way definitely gets you out of your own way makes you kind of feel like you're doing something with purpose, with deep intention, something that has magical quality to it, something that is supposed to be alchemical. Whenever I'm doing my printables for my patrons, I'm very much keeping it in mind that it's supposed to be alchemical, you know, that I want them to be able to utilise the resource in a deeply alchemical way, in a way that helps them to think differently, to heal, um, and maybe even to go back to in the future, because they did find it helpful and you know so it's something that they can access as a tool time and time again for instance let's say you're going to make your friend a care package and as part of the care package you make them um like a little book of uh, affirmations or a little printable thing that they can put in their purse or their planner or whatever that just reminds them of things that you feel like they might need to be reminded of at some time uh, or you make them some kind of like plaque to go in their home or you know um, something like that that gives them a reminder and makes them feel uplifted if you do something like that then you can always uh, also recognize that in that moment you are witching I know some people watching this aren't witches but um, at the very least you're probably woo woo right so definitely consider that you're creating a magical tool I think that's always really potent to think of it that way and again that might get you out of your own way as well it's just to be like well you know what this is not about me and my ego and whether or not I think I'm a good artist or I think I'm going to do this well it's also about being able to offer someone an alchemical energy in their life so some types of paper are way harder to cut than others <laughs> this paper for this particular magazine this is like a this feels like newspaper supplement um grade paper you know what i mean it's really really thin so you have to be so careful because you could end up putting too much pressure on it and just ripping the holy hell out of it which i don't want to do because i really like this image of this glass with whatever the hell is in it oh, oh i've cut too far in there I didn't look what I was doing. It's quite difficult to collage and talk, but that is kind of what Art Witch is about. I do have moments with the Art Witch episodes where I just let myself create and show you like a little compilation of that. 
so that I can just listen to some music or whatever. But yeah, I like to explain what I'm doing. I like to explain my process. So I think I might have to accept that I've cut that funny. Should I try and save it? Yeah. It's always about the knife, the craft knife save, darlings. It's always about that. So this piece is a little odd because it's sort of, um, it's quite big. I like it. It's a guy like sitting at a campfire and I think it's really beautiful. Um, the, the rope from the structure behind him is kind of interrupting his body. And then also there is a big bit of wood there. I don't know if I would include that or not. So I don't know if this is going to go well, but I really love it as an image of kind of like doing what you've got to do to heal and survive, you know? And in this case, it's kind of like reconnecting with self, reconnecting with nature, being in solitude and just kind of centering and I think that is um, a really strong part of setting boundaries and it's a strong part of knowing who you are and embracing your identity I also like the fact that this person is like visibly male presenting and I try with my uh, with my sort of content and my output and my art, I always try to mix it up where gender and gender presentation is concerned um, because I think, you know what, it's kind of a leftover from the very beginning of my business where I had to think very carefully about whether or not I was just speaking to women and I never really openly thought you know I never really vehemently thought oh I'm speaking to women with my work and stuff um I might have thought that I probably would only appeal to women um you know at the beginning maybe that might have been my suspicion but I never thought to myself I make things for women I'm speaking directly to women with my work um, but at the time when I first came into the spiritual community there were a lot of people whose content was um, you know di distinctly uh, to, to talk about like the experiences of women and women and spirituality and like just let me give you a caveat right, right now uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that I think that's great and I think there's reasons why that might need to to take place um you know so that's fine but I think I had to like have a word with myself about okay well what am I doing is this intended to be from you know uh, is it intended to reference the experiences of women um and i i very early decided like no no it's definitely not i would love to have men in my audience i would love to be able to connect with men and um you know i'd love to be able to connect with like non-binary people and people that have had all kinds of different gender experiences and changes and realizations and stuff um and so i never wanted men to feel alienated and i never wanted like you know any any kind of um, person with any gender experience or gender expression to feel that my imagery and the art that I put out and the resources I provide are obviously not for them. You know, I never wanted anyone to feel that way. So for me, there's a, a deep interest as well in like making sure that I do put um, different types of people in my in my work. Um, I think that happens very naturally for me when it comes to, um, you know, like racial diversity in my art, but it doesn't come as naturally to me when it comes to like gender presentation. I'm really attracted to, you know, like a, like a lot of fashion imagery of a lot of, you know, um, models and, you know, that kind of thing. Not that I think they're particularly the most attractive people. It's just that I love what they're wearing. I love what the cameraman has done, what the, you know, stylist has come up with. It's just part of me. I just like all that high fashion shit. Um, so, you know, there I, I always go for like a different range of people and it's not really something I have to overly consider. But when it comes to like making sure that I have men in my art, <laughs> that's something that I do like consciously have to remind myself like, hey, if this is going to be something that you're putting out there for people make sure that if at all applicable you pop some men in there you know men are spiritual too men are healing too men are going through stuff so yeah I think that's why I was really drawn to this this image as well I would have been drawn to it if it was someone else sitting by the fire but the fact that it's this guy I, I really like that so whenever I do my little affirmations words of power sheets for patrons I always cut out just about enough imagery that I feel like it fits on the page with the scissor lines around it. Um, and then I sort of do a little bit of an arrangement first to make sure that I'm not barking up the wrong tree and I'm, I've not got sort of too much stuff. 
this is a background that I made, this painted background. I made it a while ago. I didn't know what I wanted to use it for, but apparently I want to use it for this. So let me just see if this also fits in. So that's where I want those things. Um, and then I just want to see if I can get that other thing in. Um, let's have a little look. Hmm, maybe that would have to go that way. It's a little bit of Tetris when I do these, I must say. Um, yeah, I think maybe a little bit less there, so let me pull that. Um, I'll red on there. Take that off. Okay, I want my lovely witchy woman there. Yeah, that seems like it's going to work. I like some of them to have backgrounds and some of them not to have. So, yeah, that seems like it's enough for my words of power. And then as I'm cutting out the imagery that I want to use, I usually go ahead and start thinking about what wording I want to have on the page. So for these ones, I've got different wording I thought would be good. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that now and then just sort of like do the outline of everything and make it all come together really nicely. one which is like the words of power and affirmations so um i'm really pleased with that i've got here sometimes you just got to get back to you um i did a little bit of decoration on that so that the line rope didn't look so weird uh i deserve beauty i trust my magic i really like that one especially because it's got my own background on it may nature strengthen me which i thought was a really nice thing to put on an antler um own your choices trust your journey and discover and relish what you love so yeah i'm really pleased with that so this will be scanned now and it will be delivered as a pdf um scan to my patrons the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create some imagery for a document that isn't going to be scanned as a pdf it's going to be made as a pdf via word so i'm going to put some typed stuff in there so as you can see here you've got like a combination between the typed stuff and the handwritten um and i'm going to be doing for the uh witch card wood i'm gonna um go more into making it look a bit more like an official thing that you can write out that's got lines in it where you can put your sentences so i'll show you how i do that and talk a little bit about that process as well one thing i would definitely say when Ever you make art, whether it's art for your magic and ritual, you know, art for spellcraft, art for healing, art for other people as gifts or anything like that, um, I would always recommend that you bless it, you know, chant over it, um, give it some enchantment essentially. Before I scan anything like this and put it on Patreon, um, I always do some beautiful high vibe witchy shizzle with it that makes it so that my intention is really fused in and I really feel like I'm sending it off with kind of like twice the power you know i'm doubling that power that came from the desire to make something in the first place and i'm thinking about how i want it to be received basically and i'm sort of using my own magical intention to fuse it so i definitely would recommend that as well um, and particularly i would recommend that if you're giving anything to someone else to use you know really make sure your intention is fused in there you can definitely focus on your intention while you're making the piece but it's always i think really good to um, make it official you know so i'm definitely going to do some chiming and chanting over these things once I've made them and uh 
yeah, just put my intention and my energy into them and I might show that process as well. Okay, so basically what I decided to do um, for the other part of my Patreon offering for this month is I decided to do something I haven't tried before. I think it went quite well actually. So I picked out all of the things I wanted to include in the Witch Card Wood um, uh, ebook kind of exercise book that I'm going to make. I picked all of these different images out. There's like 15 of them. And instead of doing line work and doing painting and all that kind of thing, I decided to put them through a image management um, uh, app that I use, like a photo manipulation app that I use called Prisma. Um, I highly recommend it, by the way, if you're looking for something to make images look incredible in all kinds of various different ways, make them look like artworks, etc. Prisma is really good. Um, I've got my cutting board on this side of the screen, so you can't see names of people who've emailed me. I don't want you to actually see my inbox. But basically, I just went through and I worked on these little manipulations. So I took photographs of the little cutouts that I made on plain paper and then I took the photographs and I put them through Prisma and put different backgrounds on them. Actually, where's the one that I love the most? Um, is it that? No, hang on. Um, there's one that I really, really love. Oh, there we go, look. Look at that. Doesn't she look like such a boss? <laughs> Um, I put the tip X over her face to just sort of like give it that edge. Um, but yeah, I just basically put cool backgrounds on them. So they look uh, quite collage, but in a different way than I would usually do. So I'm now going to pop these into the Word document and then fill the Word document up with the lines for writing the sentences. And I'm going to put the questions in there. So I'll show you a little bit of that process. Okay, so I made a front cover by taking a photo of some of my cards from the Rider Waite Smith and I've just put it into Earth and View, which is just a really simple thing that I use because I can't handle Photoshop and I rarely, if ever, need to use it, to be honest. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to make the text on the front cover. Um, I'm going to take it all the way out to the edges. So I'm going to call it Witch Cardwood. I'm going to make the font a bit bigger. I'm not sure how big it needs to be, maybe 48. Um, change the colour to black. Um, actually, maybe I want a background, so background transparency, none. Yeah, I want it to be white. I don't want the font to be bold. Is it in bold? Oh yeah, it is in bold, okay. Oh, but there's an outline on it. Okay, I don't want that. Which card would? Okay. Um, so now I want to explain a little bit about what you're supposed to be using this worksheet for. Hmm. This is the part where I sometimes get stuck, sweethearts. I'm not really sure all the time what to call things and I like to have a little bit of time to think. Um, again, with the pressure of like being on camera, doing art witch on camera. Um, I want to say something about a weird exploration, but it's not really weird so much. Let's say a worksheet for getting closer to tarot. Or like, let's say a worksheet to help you. There we go. Which card would a worksheet to help you get closer to tarot? And then just underneath, I'm going to put here a Patreon exclusive. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to put Ray of Paper Sun. Okay, so I want to put that in the centre. Oh, it is in the centre already. Okay, I want it to fit the background this time. Actually, I don't think I want that there. So let me delete that bit, cancel that bit. I'm going to put the Ray of Paper... I'm going to put the, um, the copyright thing and my name somewhere else. So there we go. Which card would? A worksheet to help you get closer to Tarot. A Patreon exclusive Ray of Paper Sun. There we go. So that is the title the little um, bit on the top that explains what it is we're doing here. Oh, I've gone into my poetry. We don't want that. Um, 
I'll figure this out. Okay, it's not looking too bad. It looks kind of vibrant. I like it. And of course, my classic Harlow solid that I always return to. I really love using it. So I'm going to have a little play around now with adding these images. If I really don't like the look of them and I want something a bit more raw, then I'll go back to the drawing board. But I just thought it'd be really interesting to use Prisma and see what I could come up with from there. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying uh, this um, this part of the process now. I'm going to explain a little bit in the worksheet uh, what this is all about, like how to use it so that my patrons are not confused when they receive it. And then I'll pop everything in, put the lines in so they can write their sentences if they do wish to print it out. Obviously, it is a printable, so it is designed for use with kind of like a pen or pencil, whatever. Um, but you don't have to use it like that if you don't want to. But yeah, this is really awesome. I think it's looking pretty good. <laughs> 